Hi everyone and welcome to the Aquarium Online Academy. I am Stacy. I'm coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. Now today we are going to explore adaptations. Now I hope that you have heard of that word adaptation and while you are thinking about what it might possibly mean, adaptation, uh, I'm going to show you a number that you can reach us at. So we have a text number, and if you have any questions that you want to ask or any thoughts that you want to share, we would love for you to text us at the number right down here, 562-286-1838. So again, 562-286-1838. Just remember that data rates may apply, so you may have to ask for permission to text. All right, so adaptation. Hmm. It's a pretty big word, and if you haven't said it already, go ahead and say the word adaptation. Now, an adaptation is something that a living thing, like an animal, a plant, an algae, a seaweed, uh, anything like that, um, something that they have that's going to help them survive in their environment, in their habitat. So something that's going to help them live. Now, the way we're going to explore adaptations today is to take a look at an animal. We're going to investigate. We will be scientists and make observations, uh, mostly using our eyes. So take a really, really good look and see what we can figure out based on what we see. So we're going to be scientists by observing an animal and trying to figure out how it survives in its environment. Okay, now uh, this exhibit right here behind me is our big tropical exhibit here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. It is the largest exhibit that we have, and there are a lot of different animals with so many different kinds of adaptations. Now, the first animal I'd love to focus on, you may actually find in a habitat like this, but not exactly in this exhibit because it's a little bit more of a delicate animal, plus it eats lots of different things. And that animal is this. Does this animal look familiar to you? You may have said it's a cuttlefish, and you would be correct. Yes, this is a cuttlefish. Now, it does have a couple of very famous cousins out there. Can you think of any other animal that looks similar to this cuttlefish? That maybe is, like, related, right? Part of the family? You may have said squid and octopus. And you'd be right. So squid, octopus, cuttlefish, and this really cool animal called a nautilus. They're all part of the same group of animals. And uh, we're going to really investigate cuttlefish and what makes a cuttlefish a cuttlefish and how does it survive in its environment. Now, again, if you have any questions, I encourage you to text us. Or if you have any thoughts that you want to share, I encourage you to text us. I have my friends here in the studio with me. Um, Alicia is controlling the computer, so all of the videos and pictures that you're seeing, Alicia is putting those up for us, which is really fantastic. And Amanda is on the computer. Um, answering questions or sending those questions over to me. So again, if you want to text, use the number right down here, 562-286-1838. All right, so let's go check out its cousin, the octopus. So the cuttlefish's cousin is an octopus. What are some things that it has in common with this animal here? How do we know that they are related? Now, one of the things that I noticed through my observation is the general shape of it. It has kind of like the head and the body of it and everything right here. And then it has all the long tentacly type things or their arms right here. And that's a lot like a cuttlefish as well. So its body is actually organized a little different than us. If you think about our body organization, you may have never thought about this before, but we have our head at the top. In the middle is our body, our, our torso. That's basically where all of our guts are. And then um, we have our legs down at the bottom, right? And then we have our arms over here. Um, but that's how we're organized. We have head, body, legs and feet on the bottom. They're a little different. They are organized where their body is on one end, their head is in the middle, and their arms or legs are on this end right here. So that is one thing that they have in common that make them in the same family. All right. So again, just like the other picture that we saw, we have the body over here, then we have the head, and then all of the arms on the other end of its head. So its head's kind of more in the middle. 
it's a little bit peculiar. So let's take a look at the cuttlefish again. Do you see that same kind of organization? This is the body. It's also called a mantle, okay? The head is right here. We know it's the head because you can see the eyes. And then these little things here almost looks like a mustache, <laughs> but those are the arms. So that's its uh, organization of its body. They're called cephalopods, which means head, foot. Doesn't it just look like a giant head with some feet or tentacles? I mean, that's really kind of what I think of when I look at these animals. They're kind of funny like that. Now, uh, Gage is asking, why do cuttlefish camouflage? Ooh, Gage, you are ahead of the game. I love it. Cuttlefish are fantastic at camouflaging. Now, why would an animal want to hide? Now, if, if you've heard of the word camouflage, you probably know what I'm talking about, right? It's being able to hide in your environment. It might be shape, it might be color. Um, there are a couple different ways to camouflage. Cuttlefish are masters of camouflage. The animals in this group, the cephalopods, right? Octopus, squid, and cuttlefish, and nautiluses. They are fantastic at camouflage. But why would they want to do that? What is a benefit of hiding? Well, first, let's take a look at some of the camouflage, maybe, that uh, we might be able to see of some of our uh, cephalopod friends. So take a look at this cuttlefish here. Did you see it change color? What is it doing besides changing color? Oh, look at those color changes. Fantastic. So as you can see in that video, it is a really, really great way to catch prey, right? So when you camouflage or blend in with your habitat, you might be able to hide and jump out and catch your prey. Now that cuttlefish didn't do that. Did you notice what that cuttlefish did? It was hovering and it was hunting, but its colors were still changing. That color change actually might mesmerize or confuse something like a shrimp or a crab. Because if you were to see that, you might go, whoa, what is going on? That looks crazy. And you may not really know that that is something that's trying to hunt you. So that's one of the ways that a cuttlefish can use its colors, right? It can actually hide to get closer to prey, or it can use its colors to mesmerize or confuse. Now, another thing that they may use their colors for is to talk to each other. So it's kind of tough to just like be underwater and say, hey, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> so instead, a lot of animals in the ocean, actually a lot of animals in general, might use coloration to talk to each other. So they can actually change their colors. Um, a lot of times this happens maybe when uh, two males, two boys come across each other and they're getting territorial, they're fighting a little bit. They may change color to talk to each other. Um, it might be a boy and a girl who are kind of talking to each other. So they can use their colors to do that sort of thing. So Gage, we answered your question about camouflage and we've taken it a few steps further to look at why would you change color for any reason, right? Now, uh, cuttlefish, again, are not the only ones who do this in this family. Octopuses and squid also um, are masters at changing their color. They have these special things on their skin called chromatophores. A chromatophore is a very special uh, small cell. It's part of their skin. And um, there's a couple of different colors that they could be. And those colors, uh, the the color cells, the chromatophores, can open or close, okay? So they have muscles that open and close it, and that's how they can show off those colors. Now, it's not like this animal has to think, okay, open that one, close that one, open that one, close that one. It just kind of happens when you're thinking. Just like um, for us, we might say, oh, I wanna walk over there, and you walk. You don't have to think about, okay, to bend my knee and bend my ankle and bend my hip. So they don't have to think about uh, it in every single step of the way. They just think, I want to say this, and then their colors can change to say what they're trying to say. It's pretty incredible. Now we do have a really neat video of an octopus changing its color. So let's take a look.
All right, so very obvious. This is an octopus. But wait a minute. This is a really great example of what an octopus can do. So when we first saw the octopus, it's very dark colored like this, right? This kind of deep red brown, and it was smooth. The skin was very smooth. But when we saw it settle down on a rock, it changed its color, right? It got a lot lighter and a little bit, um, it wasn't just white. It looked a lot like the rocks. And then did you notice the texture of the skin even changed? So it became bumpy. So their color changing or their camouflage is not just, see, so look at this smooth, right? Now watch it as it changes, lighter colored, and the skin gets bumpy. So it looks a lot more like the rocks around it. And of course, it can go right back to the dark color and smooth skin again. So, um, so again, it's not just the colors that change, it's also the texture of the skin. So how the skin looks, it can be smooth, it can be a little bumpy, it can be really bumpy. They can sometimes even move their arms uh, to pose. And then that is a different way that they can, um, they can camouflage or they can even talk to each other is with their body movement. All right, so cuttlefish are pretty interesting animals. Now, we saw that video earlier of that cuttlefish hunting. What is something that you notice the animal has to do in order to hunt? Well, one of the things, it moves, right? So it has to be able to move from one place to the other. Well, how does a cuttlefish swim? Did you notice it swimming? Now, octopuses are known for walking around. They have those arms and they walk around on surfaces. They're really, really great at that. A cuttlefish is a little bit better at swimming. Now they have the same thing as an octopus. They can do jet propulsion, but here's one way that they swim. Do you see this little fin here? Yeah, that little fin does this wavy sort of pattern. And that wavy sort of pattern helps them to go through the water. So when they want to move the way that that cuttlefish was moving, they just wave that little fin and it pushes them through the water. If it wanted to move really fast in a short burst, it could use that jet propulsion. Basically, the inside of the cuttlefish, inside its mantle here, is open to the water. And so the water can go inside and they have a little tube that when they squish, the little tube spits the water out. And it's just like if you were to take a balloon and you blew it up and you let it go, all of the air coming out of that one tiny opening makes the balloon pshoo, fly, right? And it does the same thing with a cuttlefish too. So if it was to squirt out all of the water in its mantle and its body through a very small opening, pshoo, it can move really, really fast. And uh, it's pretty incredible that they can do that because that then allows them to get away very quickly in a short burst, or they can move around slowly using their little fin. So cuttlefish can move in a few different ways. Okay, so we saw that hunting means you have to move. Maybe camouflage is, a, is an important thing for that cuttlefish. The other thing is being able to catch its food. Now, how did that cuttlefish catch its food? Let's take a look at that video again of the cuttlefish catching food. How does that work? Whoa, it's quick, right? So you see all the little short things hanging out here. Those are the arms. Those really long things that reach out and grab, those are the tentacles. The tentacles of this cuttlefish are much longer so they can reach a lot further, allowing it to grab its prey very quickly and not have to get that close. Now, did you see where the tentacles went after it grabbed the food? It went to the center of all the arms. That's right. That's actually where a cuttlefish's mouth is. It's pretty incredible. So its mouth is surrounded by the arms and the tentacles. So the food has to go right to the center and then it will be able to bite and eat its prey. Now, it's a pretty cool thing uh, what these animals can do. And that is one of the ways that they eat, right? So they have to change color so they can get a little closer or they can hide. Um, they need to be able to move, so that's what this uh, fin is used for. And of course, they need to be able to catch its prey. So that is what 
all of the arms and the tentacles are used for. So now we know a little bit more about cuttlefish and how they capture their food. Let's take a look at another animal and see how it eats. Now, uh, one of my favorite animals, and I know this seems really weird, is uh, <laughs> oh, hi, cuttlefish, is a crab. Crabs are really cool animals, and we don't really think about them catching prey very much because crabs are not the fastest animals on our planet, uh, but they're really great at doing crabby things. So, what is this crab doing? Let's observe it. What do you notice? Now, I noticed that it has great camouflage. So we're actually like right on track with the cuttlefish, but it's a very different animal, right? They look very, very different. A crab has a hard shell. A cuttlefish is pretty much all soft except for a cuddle bone on the inside that gives it some structure. Okay, it's a lot like having a shell, but on the inside of the body. The crab has its exoskeleton um, on the outside of its body. So it's nice and hard. But if you notice, it has all the seaweed and stuff growing on it. And that allows the crab to hide. So it can actually uh, protect itself through hiding. But do you think that that's what's needed when they eat? Well, a really uh, good way to see what crabs eat is to maybe watch a video of a crab eating. And we actually do have a video. This crab is a little bit different. This one is a little hermit crab that lives inside of coral, so lives inside of another animal. And this one is eating. See all the little particles? That's food. How does this crab eat? Take a look. So this crab looks a little bit different than the other crab, right? It does have camouflage, right? It's hiding in here, so it won't get eaten as well because it's hiding. But also, uh, any plankton is just kind of floating by. And it has those long things, like tentacles, or uh, like uh, antenna, that look like feathers. And what it does is it captures the food using that, and then it's able to eat off of its antenna. So that's the little feather-like antenna thing. You can see all the particles of food. So they stick to this and then they're able to take it to their mouth, which is right there in the center. So it's a very interesting way for it to eat. So it just eats whatever's kind of floating by. That's more or less what crabs do. Whatever kind of food they can eat that is available to them, that's what they're going to eat. A lot of them are scavengers. They just kind of walk around and if they find some leftovers, if they find something that doesn't move very fast, like a sponge, um, that's something that it might eat. Can you see a crab in this picture? It's a little tough, right? It's right there. It's actually right there in the center of the picture. This is a kelp crab. Fantastic camouflage. And it crawls around in the kelp, in the seaweed, looking for tasty things to eat. Now, how do they eat those things? A lot of crabs have those little pinchers, right? And those little pinchers are really fantastic for shredding up food. So it's a little easier to eat because you may have noticed that crabs don't have a big old mouth like we do to take a big bite, right? They need to be able to shred things into tiny pieces so they can take, put it into their really small mouth. And then the other thing that's really interesting about their mouth is it's made up of a whole bunch of different little parts. So their mouth parts are there to kind of shred up the food just a little bit more so it's easier for them to swallow. Now, where is the mouth on this crab? Can you see it? It's a little bit tough. It's right up here. Okay. So I actually have a lobster molt. So this is a lobster that um, may still very well be alive. Uh, this is not the actual animal itself, but this is just the exoskeleton. So a crab and a lobster are arthropods. They're animals with a hard exoskeleton or outside skeleton with jointed legs. Okay, and you can see the joints on this. You can see the joint on my crab there. Um, and they will actually go come out of their exoskeleton um, in order to grow because this is very hard. So they can't grow any bigger than however big this is. So they come out of it, then they're soft, and then they have to harden their exoskeleton again. They can grow a little bit more and then they have to do it over. So that's how we got this artifact right here. But I would love to take this to my document camera where we can take a closer look at the lobster's mouth. So I'm gonna head on over here. 
It'll take me just a moment to get the light on here. All right, so now that we have that light on, let's take a look at the underside of this lobster. I'm gonna zoom it in. Okay, so again, this is the bottom of the lobster. And what you can see here is its mouth right about there. So it actually has a lot of really kind of fuzzy looking parts. Let's get in there. All right. So it almost looks like fur, right? And all of these things help to capture the little bits of food that it is trying to eat. So that's where the mouth is right there. And then if we go back to that video, uh, that first video of the crab that we saw with a great camouflage, um, we can actually see a really good view of all the little mouth bits moving. Oh, we also have um, a video of a spider crab up close. So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's play this video. Okay, can you see its mouth? It's right, right there. Okay. And so it wasn't moving quite as much, but we can definitely, let's zoom this out. It's a little bit weird to see up close, that close. Okay, so uh, you can definitely see that it has a lot going on there, right? It's not just as simple as having a place that opens and closes with some teeth. There's a lot more happening. Take a look. And it's going to zoom in too, so you can get a really, really good look at the little mouth parts moving. Look at that. Just incredible. So that's what they're using instead to kind of shred up the food so they can swallow it. They can't chew it the same way that we can. All right, we have a question here. How do octopuses change the texture of their skin? That's a really great question. Um, the Let's see, I'm gonna just read this out. Amanda was able to find an answer for us. Um, it says palpulae are spikes on their skin, okay? They have muscles. Um, in a spider web pattern with concentric circles. So uh, when they contract, it pulls the skin into a spike. So it sounds like they have some parts on their skin that have muscles attached to it, right? And so when it contracts, the spike comes out. Pretty cool. All right, now here is a really interesting video. I want you to take a look. Do you see any recognizable animals in this picture? No? All right. Well, let's watch the video and see what you can find. All right. So since we were talking about the octopus's skin, right, that was a really interesting video to show just how good their camouflage is. Now for us, when we see those videos of an octopus and then it settles down and it and it changes its color and texture, we know where the octopus went. That's how we know that's where it is. But if you were a predator of an octopus and you were just cruising by and you had no idea there was an octopus there, would you be able to find this? Maybe not, right? It's going to be a lot harder to move. So when we focus in, it's much easier to see because we know we're looking for something. But if you see the entire ocean floor and you're looking for something, it's going to be a lot tougher to spot. Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about um, the cuttlefish and the octopus, kind of how they eat, crabs and lobsters, how they eat. I think I'm on an eating kick. I think maybe, maybe it's getting close to lunchtime. It's getting uh, just about time for us to eat. Let's take a look at another animal and try to figure out how it eats. Sea stars. Now, have you ever thought about a sea star? Does it have a face? Does it have a mouth? Well, take a look. So we're seeing the back of a lot of sea stars. We're also seeing some sea anemones. Okay, those are the ones with the wiggly tentacles. Um, but we have a lot of sea stars in here as well. Hi, little fish. So these sea stars don't really have a face, not a traditional face with eyes, nose, mouth, like we do, right? So instead, they have their eyes on the ends of each of their arms. They're very specialized um, feet, which kind of sounds crazy, that can detect light so they know if it's light or dark. Okay, so that's where we know their eyes are. But what about their mouth? Where's the star's mouth? It's on the underside of the star. So right there 
in the center. Now, as you can see, it's also not a mouth like ours, right? It's not like a big old thing that can open up with teeth. Instead, a lot of sea stars, and this is kind of crazy, um, can either just suck food straight in or their stomach comes out. Now, you may be wondering, why would a stomach come out of their body? And it's because of the kinds of things that they eat. Now, the sea stars where their stomach comes out of their body, they're often eating things that have a really hard shell. They don't have teeth. They don't have anything that can crush that shell so they can get the meat on the inside. So imagine like a clam, right? So what they have to do instead is open up the clam just enough so they can get the food on the inside. The best way to do that is just to shove your stomach in there. All right. So these feet, all those little dots that you see there, those are their tube feet, tube, T-U-B-E tube. And so those are what they use to walk around. Okay. That's what they use to stick to surfaces and they also stick to their food. So they'll wrap around a shell. They'll stick to it. They're strong enough to be able to open it up just a little bit and then their stomach comes out of the center of their body it goes into the shell and it partially digests the food it basically makes it into a clam smoothie and then they suck their stomach and the food back into their body to finish digesting so they kind of have a weird way of eating but it definitely works for them now we did say or i did say that they eat clam they also eat other things so uh they might find some leftovers that just are hanging out on the ocean floor. They can be scavengers too. So they'll catch things that don't move too fast. They'll also catch things um, that aren't moving at all, like um, somebody's leftovers, or some of them even eat algae. Now, one of the reasons why they have to eat things that don't move too fast is, look at that. Now, stars do move. They really do walk. And here's some really great evidence of it. They're not super fast. They're actually a little on the slower side. But all those little feet that we were seeing in that picture earlier are all moving together to help it basically just glide along the ocean floor. So anything they eat has to be slow enough that they can catch it. Okay? Very cool. All right. Let's take a look again at another animal. Actually, let's take a look at the sea anemone. Why not? They're right in there, right? How does a sea anemone eat? Well, it also does not have a face like us, right? Oh, <laughs> let's go back to the sea anemones. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, we're going to take a look at the sea anemones. They also do not have a face right? Uh, they actually don't have eyes. They don't have a nose. Crazy thing is they don't even have a brain. So there's not really much going on here, but they do have a mouth. If you were to look at this picture, where would you say the mouth is? It's right there in the center, right? Okay, so this is the mouth. How will they catch their food? Well, they have all these beautiful tentacles surrounding their mouth. That's a really great way to catch food, especially because those tentacles can sting. Now, the sting is not only great for something that's moving, so you can catch it, sting it, and it stops moving, but it's also really great to just catch it, right? Their sting is a whole lot like having tiny little harpoons or like arrows that are connected to them with like a string. Okay, so when something touches or brushes a tentacle, all those little stingers uh, shoot out and they can sting, say, a little fish that happens to swim in their tentacles. And then they're able to wrap around it. So remember how I said it doesn't have a brain? It doesn't think about catching food. It just reacts. So if something was to touch it, it reacts by closing. That allows more tentacles to touch the little fish. And then they're able to take it to the center, which is their mouth. And then they swallow it whole. Now, it's pretty crazy because that allows them to eat so many different things. They can eat little fish. They can eat leftovers that were just floating by that they happened to capture. They could even potentially eat something that just falls in, like a sea star a sea urchin. I have seen that happen um, 
from different anemones around. Now, it also means, because they don't have a brain to think, that they might even eat rocks. Of course, they can't digest the rock. So then they're just going to get rid of it. Now, how do they do that? Well, they just spit it back out. So that center is the only body opening they have. So the food goes in there, and whatever they can't digest comes back out the same place. It's so interesting. So there's so many different animals in the ocean. They have so many different adaptations to help them survive. If you want to learn more, I encourage you to take a look at an animal and maybe start with how does that animal eat? How is it going to catch food? And how does it actually get that food inside its body? Now, it's just about time for lunch, so thank you all so much for joining us today. It is a special Giving Tuesday now, so um, if you enjoyed this program and you are able to give, we would love it um, if you would give to us. Uh, here is the website down here, Pacific two slash giving Tuesday now any amount is appreciated so we can continue to bring you programs like this like the daily bubble and um, also all of the really neat things that our animal care team is doing uh, to, to take care of our animals and also to show everybody out there um, how we take care of our animals so thanks again for joining us today and we have a couple more programs this afternoon hopefully we'll see you then bye